Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to go through one of the video topics that was requested underneath one of the posts I put in the Facebook group. So what I'm gonna do is every month or so, I'm gonna make a post in the Facebook group um, or on Instagram asking people to, you know, what topics they wanna to see covered or maybe what topics they wanna see covered again from a different perspective. And I will do them if I think I know enough about that topic to do a video on because there are certain ones I've never dealt with. And although I understand the basics, I think it's better to come from someone like Rob or someone like that with real event or false memory for those ones specifically. So today I'm gonna to talk about mental checking and how mental checking is usually missed and why mental, mental checking is one of the key factors to keeping people kind of locked in the OCD cycle. So before we go any further, can please subscribe down below. I believe we're at 560 videos on the channel, so lots of great free content out there for you to watch. Uh, I do want to actually say that I highly recommend people watch Jade's video, uh, which was posted yesterday, which was November 19, 2021 on her recovery journey to show you just how low you can be to just how far you can get. Um, uh, I think Jade's videos are amazing. <laughs> I talk her up a lot. I think she's great. I think all the people are great that do videos on the channel, but Jade is just so calm and collect in her um, calculation almost and how she speaks. It's just fantastic and it just gives a lot of hope. So that video is tremendous. So, well, well, let's go in the first thing I want to talk about with mental checking and why mental checking is often missed. I want to talk about pure O. So many people know that we don't use the term pure O and that's for a couple reasons. It's not, well, first of all, there's no such thing as pure obsession-based OCD. That is a myth um, and unfounded. So you, you have many compulsive behaviors. They're just mental. And if I could be willing to bet that if I was with that person, they probably have some avoidance type compulsions too. So even though the, compul the avoidance compulsion isn't in so much an outright compulsion as touching a doorknob or like hiding knives um, or doing you know magical thinking with thing uh, light switches for a very easy crude example, Avoidance is still an outward compulsion. There's a mental aspect to it, but you're still physically outward avoiding something. So I would have to imagine that if someone had, you know, in what they believe is pure O, they're still actually avoiding a lot. So they actually do have outward compulsion. So it's not correct the way that people talk about pure O. And when I watch people on forums and watch people on YouTube talk about pure O, they talk about it in a way that where they think they're treatment resistant, where they think that they're different. You're not different. You just have an obsession that's mainly mental rumination and checking with the internal thermometer. So it is important to cover that because I think pure O doesn't actually add anything. Kirsty talked about the benefits of having themes, so like somatic OCD or sensory motor or ROCD or POCD. You don't actually need those titles, but those titles give you a slight insight into when you're actually going about disputing the core fear and how to go about doing that. So if you have ROCD, you have more than likely the fear, the core fear is related to your relationship. So it, there are some benefits to you know, looking at in that perspective. There are no benefits to saying you have pure O because it makes you think something that's not real. Um, and not in the sense of like trying to trick you, like say an OCD um, fear or something like that. It literally isn't a factual thing. There is no such thing as pure O. You just have an obsession that has mainly avoidance behaviors, more than likely is your outward compulsion, and you have a lot of mental checking. So let's talk about what mental checking is and how mental checking slash automatic rumination goes down. But before I talk about that, I wanna talk about one of the other biggest myths out there, that you can bring down rumination automatically day by day, week by week. This is incorrect and not true, um, which mean the same thing, incorrect and not true. <laughs> I do that sometimes. So it, it's false. And you can bring down, well, if you start to find yourself ruminating, you can say, oh, you know, you don't need to ruminate. And that can become compulsive and it's actually not in line with so much acceptance. Um, so it's a slippery slope and I'm not gonna really talk about that particular part because I can make a whole video on that and like remember engaging versus disputing and the differences. but. When you're automatically ruminating about something, the reason why that's happening is because you're still scared. So there is no tip and trick to, the automatic rumination is a symptom of your core fear. So my core fear with somatic OCD was being stuck for the rest of my life. So that enhanced my automatic rumination that would kind of come on autopilot. So people ask, well, how do I bring down the auto, auto, automatic rumination? It's like, it's a, a crude example would be, um, diabetes, okay? So uh, increased blood glucose, so glucose 
inside of your bloodstream that's not being shuttled out from your um, from insulin, which comes from your beta cells in your pancreas, the symptom of the increased blood glucose, fasting blood glucose, is because you're unhealthy. So how you fix the blood glucose? You get healthy by lifestyle factors. This is the same exact thing for automatic rumination. So automatic rumination is going on because you're still scared. It's a symptom of being scared. So you don't wanna work on the symptom, you wanna work on the core fear because when you bring down the core fear, you actually bring down the automatic rumination. This is, this is pretty poorly understood among a lot of people. Um, there are people that definitely understand it, but anyone that's telling you that you could just bring down rumination, um, all, like just you know, bring it down 1%, 2% every day, that's not real. Um, I remember I was told um, a while ago that if I brought down rumination X amount of times uh, percent per day, that I would be recovered in X amount of days. And that's a very dangerous slope. And we're not gonna talk about dot deadlines in this video, but deadlines are more than likely one of the least beneficial things in our journey. So that mental checking that is going on, whether it's automatic or whether you're doing it outright is because you're still scared. So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, physical symptoms of anxiety because they can be very uncomfortable for people. Some people are more intrusive thought based. Some people are sensation based urges or a mix in between. Um, but none of that actually matters because OCD is OCD is OCD. So in order to bring that down, let's look at the core fear. So let's say you have someone that has chronic anxiety, right? My OCD journey has been primarily discomfort because it knows that I enjoy being comfortable. Um, it also knows that I was scared about all the physical anxiety symptoms because I had a belief that, you know, I can't stand if it ruined my progress in the gym. I can't stand if it ruined my discomfort in places. And I had to say, well, even if I lost all the muscle I have and even if I never made any progress, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I still don't fully believe that, but it's brought down that it's, it's taken off a few onion layers. Now that automatic rumination that I was feeling in the gym and the mental checking in the gym for looking in the mirror and making sure I didn't look a certain way was happening because I was scared. If I was not scared, I wouldn't be doing that. And um, the somatic OCD I'm completely recovered from. The body dysmorphic stuff, not so much, but I only really kind of started working on that not even two months ago, really. So it's going to be another journey ahead of me, which is just part of it. In Jade's video, she explains how she had real event, or I think it was real event or false memory, last from like 13 to 20. I was like, holy shit. So, you know, and um, it's just crazy when you look at other people's stories and it can bring in, in some perspective on how long the journey might take. It's not to put you down and make you feel discouraged because it is a mindset. Like you're either going to binary, you're either going to let OCD run all over you or you're going to say, I'm going to accept its presence for the time being. I'm probably going to engage in automatic rumination until I learn how to actually bring the fear down. I'm probably not going to stop all my compulsions overnight. You know, it's a gradual process. It's If anyone tells you that you could just stop all compulsive behavior right away, uh, it's more than likely not going to happen. You could do it, but I, it's not realistic. So that mental checking, again, that's going on is happening because you're afraid. So back to the example of being stuck forever. So, right, let's say... You're walking around with that internal thermometer and you're constantly checking whether you're anxious or not. So you're walking around with the switchboard example I like to use with all these different switches, okay? All these, these basically small thermometers in your mind. You have one for the grocery store, you have one for the barber shop, you have one for the mall, maybe for the, the spouse or whoever you're with when you're with your family, when you're doing studying, right? Oh, is the anxiety gonna be there when I'm studying again? That's gonna happen automatically until you start to realize that being anxious is not the end of the world, even if it caused you some sort of physical ailment in the future. Because we all are gonna die anyway, and I know that might sound morbid and sad. I like how Kirsty said it. She, you know, she says something like, the only thing that we're, we're sure about is that we will die one day. She's so sweet. What a sweet Mother Teresa woman she is. But it is true. Um, death is the only thing we know for sure as of right now. Who knows if that's gonna change in the future. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's important to cover the basic reality and objectiveness of, of life because the more rational beliefs we have and the more we kind of step out of line with rational thinking reality, the more for us, especially as OCD suffers, these irrational beliefs really start to fester and cause all sorts of problems. So even if you were anxious while you were studying, I mean, I was extremely anxious doing many things. I mean, shaking sweating, heart palpitations, like do, 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 right? And you look fine. You look, you know, you're talking to someone and you're like, yeah, yeah, I love that movie. And inside you're like, I'm dying right now. 
but that's just part of the journey. So you can learn to accept that. And on top of that, not to get a little too off topic, but into the concentration stuff. So people are like, well, how am I going to concentrate or take all the information if I'm chronically anxious? And that's just a fear of fear. Like, what if I don't remember everything? And, and all these mental rumination checking thing, back to what I said 10 times already, is happening because you're afraid. So, you know, you're afraid of being chronically anxious, like the example we said. Well, why would it be so tough to be chronically anxious forever, right? Rob, I'll use it in 30% anxiety for the rest of my life. It would be uncomfortable, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. And that's hard for people to conceptualize because we have an obsession with comfort in this society. So once you start to break that down over time in a non-compulsive manner, and I'm not going to talk about in this video how to actually dispute certain things. There's plenty of videos on the YouTube channel talking about how to dispute certain fears. Um, but this is about why the mental checking and mental rumination is going on. So, you know, if you are afraid of planes, your mind will remind you about being afraid of planes when you're walking on the tarmac. You might get some physical symptoms. So people, all they want to do right away is, right, maybe they take a, a benzodiazepine if they're, if they're, they're not, you know, educating or saying anything on, on medications. I'm just using an example. They're prescribed benzodiazepines and they take a, a benzo or a Xanax, half a Xanax, and they start to feel better and they feel calm and they go on the flight. Well, that's good and all, and it makes you feel better, but it actually doesn't get over the irrational fear of planes. It doesn't actually touch on the core belief. And this is why we talk about, again, not advising on medication. It's a personal choice. No shame if you take them. Many people take them. But you'll need to more than likely work on the core fear as you take the edge off. And the core fear is really driving those symptoms. So everything you're doing to escape from the discomfort, to escape from the mental checking, is all a product of the fear. See how I keep coming back to the fear? It's because that if you are not afraid of planes, um, you might have a, you know, a normal, quote unquote, normal intrusive thought. Maybe you're there and I get in sometimes. I'll be on the plane. I'm like, well, I mean, this plane just blows up right now. You know, um, people have stuff like that. You're not in control. It's an uncertainty thing. And it's funny when you actually break down the rational thinking about something like that. So you have a fear of planes. Um, you know, you're more than likely much more to die in a car accident than a plane. But you don't think about it like that because it's, there's an uncertainty because you're not in control. You don't know the person who's flying the plane. You don't know if they had five bottles of vodka before they, they flew the flight. It's, there's so many different factors to it. So this is why when you have a disorder like OCD or GAD or PTSD, we just have a heightened response to fears. And we just look at them in a real rational manner. It doesn't matter why this is happening. It doesn't matter where OCD came from, whether it's genetic, whether it's caused by trauma. None of that actually matters for us. What It might matter for the researcher trying to figure out a cure. Remember, there's no cure, just recovery, but there's no real difference. Um, but, you know, that's the main thing. So I know I got a little bit off topic on some things here, but I think everything I spoke about had a, a point to, to be mentioned. So I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, disputing your irrational beliefs over time, bringing down the fear, living how to live your life, bringing down avoidance behaviors, bring down compulsive behaviors, whether it's mental or outward, um, and all the different things we talk about really leaving, leading a much more rational life gets you to a place where OCD no longer has its grips on you, and then over time you learn to get to a place where you kind of forget you even have OCD. Um, that's just the way it goes. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great day. And don't forget to subscribe.